Hey, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be showcasing this software called Hangover for ARM-based computers like Raspberry Pi. And what Hangover does is basically allows you to run x86 applications and ARM64 applications on your ARM-based computers. How it works is Hangover uses various emulators as DLLs and picks them to suit your needs, which in turn actually makes stuff boot up a lot faster to only emulate the application that you want instead of emulating the complete Wine installation. As soon as the application does a windows slash wine system call, say NT user create window, it executes outside of the emulator, non emulate it, which means it's faster and it's like native speeds. In short, we break out emulation at Win32 syscalls or wine unit call levels, performance reasons, which enables, which is enabled by the WoW64 support in wine. So technically what this means is running his software will allow you to run applications faster. To me, it means it's another way to actually run x86 applications as well as ARM64 applications. Now moving on, if you want to review some of his stuff, he has a lot of stuff listed on his GitHub on how it works, little tweaks here and there. And also Micro Linux has his YouTube channel that actually showcases a little bit more with the tweaks and more games. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link down in the description below for his video. But let's get this installed on our computer, which is a fresh install of Raspberry Pi 5. On the case we recently reviewed, which is the Pi Moroni 5, I believe it's called. So I'm going to head over to Hangover in releases and download his latest release. And because I'm using Debian 12 Bookworm, I'm going to download this tar file right over here. All right. And there we have it. I'm just going to extract here and should be a couple of files. Now, from this, all you have to do is just install one file. Actually, I could just minimize that. So let me go into open terminal here, make this a little bit bigger so you guys could see. And from here we have four files. Well, technically three devs and one tar. And the first thing we want to do is actually install the hangover wine 9.15. So we're going to do sudo apt install hangover wine arm64.deb and it's going to be a one gig. Okay. And with this all said and done, that should be it to get everything up. But it doesn't work off the bat with the Raspberry Pi 5 due to kernel issues. So let's see how much space I have now. I have 439 gigabytes. I'm using 6.8 gigs free. Okay. The problem we have with the Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabyte model is we are using a bigger page size than we need to, which does not allow wine to function properly so if i go to wine config it's actually going to break and it's going to fail to load and if you get this message that means you run into this issue now if you're using like a four gig or two gig or one gig you might not have this issue but if you do what you need to do is go to sudo nano etc no nope, not etc sorry sudo nano slash boot firmware and then modify the config.txt file and down here, we're going to go to all, I just page down, and type in kernel equal kernel 8.img. So we're going to load the kernel 8 image, which will actually have a 4K page file, which will allow Wine to run properly. All right, now we save that. Now we're not done. I don't want to reboot it yet because we do need to do one more setting. Now because, again, this is another Raspberry Pi issue, since Raspberry Pi runs on Wayland slash Wayfire, we have issues running wine in that as well. So there are tweaks that you can do in wine tricks and stuff to modify it. So it supports the compositor and window manager and all this other stuff, but it's too much of a headache, especially for a demo reel that I'm trying to showcase some stuff. So what I'm going to do now is just sudo raspi config and switch it, go to advanced option, go to Wayland and switch it to X11 instead of using Wayfire. And now that we're finished, I'm going to allow this to reboot. So it's going to reboot in the new kernel and X11 instead. All right. Now with a successful reboot or rebooting, uh, we should be able to run wine config. So I'm going to head over to the terminal, make this a much bigger. Let's do wine config and boom, voila. There we have it. Wine config is working perfectly fine. Okay, cool. Now let's find some applications that we could test this on. So. I'm going to close this out, go back to my browser, and the best application, technically we have it for Linux already, but the best application I found to test this on was Putty, actually. 
Why? Because it's simple, it's easy to load, and it's easy to download. So might as well. I'm going to head over to PuTTY, download PuTTY, and there's three different versions. You see there's x86, there's ARM, and there's x86 32-bit. So I'm going to download all three technically. Actually, I'm going to download the, just the PuTTY itself. So we're going to try, the first one is 32-bit x64. We're going to download that. And let me sh go over to Downloads. And you can see I have the PuTTY file here. So I'm going to do uh, Wine PuTTY exe and it loads right up. So there we have our PuTTY session. So you know we're running a Windows application, x86 32-bit, and it's PuTTY and it runs perfectly fine. Now, if I wanted to download the x86 64-bit version, right, I'm gonna download that. And let's list structure, and we're gonna do mv PuTTY slash that, and then we're gonna rename this to PuTTY underscore x 86 underscore 64 dot exe. So now we know that that's x86 64. We're going to run wine and then we're going to do putty x86 64. And this will actually not load. But if I do the ARM 64 bit, all right, I'm going to download this one. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. MV, which is basically renaming it, putty, and we're going to rename this to putty underscore arm64.exe, and then we're going to list structure again, wine putty arm64, arm64, and you can see it runs arm64 and x86. The only thing it won't run is x86 64 bit, but that's okay, like I said. I'd rather use this to run ARM64 and x86 anyway. Majority of it is because since Windows on ARM is a thing, there's actually a lot of applications that are being built on ARM64 EXE. So being able to run it on like something like a Raspberry Pi is pretty impressive. So the next thing I want to try on this is Notepad++. Plus plus. So let's go to Notepad++. Plus plus. Let's go to Downloads. And this time we're actually going to download the whole installer. Uh, six, uh, technically 6.9 was up. Let's see, 6.9 right here. And let's download, uh, not the 32-bit, but download the ARM64 installer. Let's do that. So ARM64 installer is downloaded. Let's do wine npp. And let's see if the installer works. Okay, installer kicked in. Okay. Next, next, I agree. Okay, we'll let that install there. Can we make a desktop application custom auto updater? Next, create desktop trucker. There you go. Install. Let's see how that works. And I am not going to launch this now, but there you go. We have a desktop icon. We go here, wine, programs, no plus plus plus. Okay, let's run it. Execute. And there we have our Notepad++ in administrator mode too. We got all our menus. We could type in stuff here. And now we have an ARM 64-bit Notepad++ running natively, almost natively on our Raspberry Pi. But it works really quick. So my intentions of getting applications to work uh, does work. Now, again, your mileage may vary depending on applications because there's a lot. Uh, I haven't tried because if you know my condition on what I'm doing, I actually no longer have Adobe subscriptions. So I was planning to try Adobe ARM64, but I don't actually have the installer, so I can't even try that. But what I could try is some games. So I'm going to head over to my NAS right now. Go to network, head over to my NAS. Head over to my GOG folders and I'm going to get grab some like older games that I know might work. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to grab SimCity and Fast and Light. So let's grab these two because they're technically a very old game. And you can run those on like Windows XP and stuff like that. And they're all from GOG. So what we're going to do now is head back over to our downloads and run Wine. And let's do Setup FTL. Fast and light. If you guys never played this game, it's actually really fun. It's a simple game, and the graphics are very simple, but it's actually a very fun game. So now this is from my GOG. I can hit yes, install. I'm going to let this go through. 
create desktop I kind of I don't know if I select it now or it just does it for me but now we don't need this anymore we are close that out uh, we have a few things in here we're gonna let that go through it's installing perfectly fine and there we have it fast and light was successfully installed I'm gonna exit this and it created a little desktop icon I think it takes a little bit of time for this to refresh but let's run this execute there you go the icon and there we have our game fast and light it is so simple I just all I did was install the deb now because like I said it was Raspberry Pi I had to do some little configurations to get stuff to work but here we go we got the game working English continue audio works I'm not gonna play the game but you guys get the idea everything does work it does start up like it does it actually starts up pretty quick it feels faster than box 86 and box 64 but I really can't tell because I am running, the last time I ran Box86 I think was on Raspberry Pi 4 and on Raspberry Pi 5 I haven't really ran any of that stuff yet. But otherwise, let's try, uh, can I just, oh I could, wine print, yeah look at that. Instead of typing it in, oh yeah, that's cool. Because it's baked into system now, I could actually just right click it and, and run the XEs like this. Install SimCity, yes sir. Mm, install, man I should have got Roller Coaster Tycoon too, I love that game. Roller Coaster Tycoon was good. Fast and Light. I like SimCity 2000. I've actually never played 3000, but I have it. I own it on GOG. Uh, a few other games on GOG that I own that I want to play. It's just all older games that I like. Honestly, a lot of the newer games don't really interest me as much. But I have been playing uh, Wukong, and that seems to be a pretty fun game. A bit hard, but it is a pretty fun game. And there we go, SimCity 3000 installed i'm going to exit this and let's execute oh look it could get full screen to work when the okay preferences it's 800 by 600 so let's change that to at least something bigger okay yes yes let's leave that and let's see if full screen works now full screen is the thing only if you're using x11 if, I think Wayland doesn't have this full screen issue, uh, has a full screen issue. So now if I start a new city, yes, audio works, all this is working. Uh, I'll accept this terrain. Okay, and can I zoom in? I want to build some industrial stuff. Oh yeah, look at that. I could build some roads. Man, I haven't played a game like this in a while. I might want to play SimCity. Maybe SimCity 3000 or go back to SimCity 2000. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, let's let's exit this. Exit. Leaving SimCity, yes. Do you want to see it? No. And there we go. Now, apparently if you want more emulation, you could actually install these other two files, but they're not required. So if I install WoW64 and QEMU, it emulates other stuff that I could run, I guess, more software that I need. But for testing purposes, it runs what I need to do. And I'm just trying to spread more light to this application because I want de more development and more eyes on it. I feel like this could go somewhere, especially when we start developing dedicated game servers based on ARM64 software. So like right now we do have some dockers that run say Valheim, but in the back end it's actually still running like a Box86 emulator or QEMU emulator to run the .exe file to run that server. So if we have more applications that could do some stuff like this, we'll be able to use more software. Anyway, that's it for me. I do urge you guys to check out Micro Linux's video on this take of Hangover because he actually has a lot of tweaks that you could do using Wine Tricks to improve the speed and CPU usage of this particular software called Hangover. Again, I'll leave a link to his video down in the description below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.